Hello and welcome to the second Oxford Big Questions talk of this term. Um, here at Oxford Big Questions, we love engaging with some of the, the bigger questions of life and faith. Um, we had the pleasure of, of hosting John Lennox a few weeks ago, chatting to us about uh, where is God in a coronavirus world. And today we're joined by Brian Heasley, uh, who works at 24-7 Prayer. Uh, and we're going to be thinking about this question, prayer, what's the whole point? Brian, it's great to have you with us. Oh, it's great to be here, Sam. Thanks for having me. Well, we, we, why are we thinking about this topic of prayer? Well, we're hearing that nearly half of all adults in the UK, about 44%, say they pray. Um, and all of us will, will know someone that does. Um, but, but what is it all about? Whether you've never prayed before and, and you think it's perhaps a bit silly, um, or you, whether you've had lots of experiences with prayer, um, you're really welcome here. Um, after Brian has chatted to us, we're going to have some time for Q&A. Uh, and if you click on the link next to the stream, um, that will take you to a page where you can submit your questions uh, and we'll hopefully be able to answer some of them at the end. Um, Brian, before we start, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, yeah, sure. My name's Brian Heasley. I'm based in Norfolk. Welcome to my attic. Uh, we're getting to see a new view of everybody's world. I, uh, I, I work for an organisation called 24-7 Prayer. We've been around for about 20 years. Uh, it's very much about prayer and mission. So the idea that prayer is not just disconnected on its own, but prayer is connected to the mission of the church and that, yeah, we help people pray. We help churches set up prayer rooms. We do teaching on prayer. We do training on prayer. I've spent many years just teaching and training and helping others to pray and to look at what, what prayer is. I'm also a global ambassador for uh, an initiative called Thy Kingdom Come, based out of Lambeth Palace uh, from the, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, which is a real joy and a privilege. From Ascension, which was yesterday, to Pentecost, we pray for 10 days and have seen... Uh, millions of people around the world engage in that initiative so i get the the joy and the privilege to travel all over the globe or i had the joy and the privilege of traveling all over the globe and uh until a few months ago to help and facilitate prayer so whether that be for instance uh last year maybe to uh, a tribe in uh, up the rain in the rainforest in borneo to a uh, urban center in new york and everywhere in between so i get to really see people experience and uh pray in, in i was going to say in different ways but actually it's weirdly not that different so. mm -hmm. brilliant thank you brian and uh, we've obviously been in lockdown for a few weeks very different life has changed a lot um, how have you been how have you been finding that uh, I have days where I'm loving it and days where I'm hating it. Uh, international travel, all the stuff I do is, is great. I'm normally going to London a couple of times a week. Uh, I kind of, at first it was like, ah, get me out of here. And then, and then I've settled in. It's a good rhythm, good rhythm. It's very middle-class lockdown. So I've got friends who are based in a township in South Africa and it's very different. So uh, from a perspective point of view, I have a garden, I have a loft, you know, uh, everything's OK. And uh, as a family, we're all safe. So it's 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 hard to complain. Mm. But I think I'm probably you just have to watch your mental health, You've got to watch how you, you, you know, make sure you get out do the walking, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, weirdly, even at my age, you can just forget, you can speak, you know, oh my goodness, it's been like three days and I haven't gone anywhere, I haven't done anything. I've just sat in front of the screen and mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but sometimes feel a little bit zoomed out as well. But not not this afternoon, because it's Friday and we've got a long weekend ahead, so that's great. Mm, yes, yeah, hopefully not. Um, great, well, Brian, we'll hand over to you um, for, for 20, 25 minutes and then uh, do send your questions in and, and we'll, yeah, over to you, Brian. Great. Well, I guess for me to, today, I, the, the, the nature of the game is that I talk to you about prayer. I think there's lots and lots of different uh, subjects and aspects to prayer that we could talk about. Uh, there's been a recent study from the University of Copenhagen uh, by uh, Jeanette Sinding Benson, who's an associate professor there, on the fact that over the last three months, there's been an incredible increase of Google searches around prayer, like a 50% increase worldwide. One that hasn't slowed down, slowed down, or one that hasn't, you know, changed. That people are looking for and searching for prayer. So we kind of we've we've arrived at this moment, this moment of almost as it were we got everything we ever wanted. Everything our culture told us we should be getting was like, just sit down and binge watch Netflix, take it easy, chill, you know, all that sort of stuff. And all of a sudden as we've got there, people are like, oh my goodness. And the, the, 
this isn't a, re a response to Netflix, by the way, but I think people have got to the point of thinking this, this is, if the science is to be, be believed and the stats that we are seeing are to believed, be believed, this is an incredibly challenging time for the planet. And in that, people have started to Google prayer, people started to look into prayer, people started to ask questions about prayer. And I, 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 it's not unusual in times of crisis for people to turn to prayer, for people who maybe even would have said a number of months ago, I'm an atheist, to uh, turn to prayer. Uh, we lived for a number of years in Ibiza in Spain, and we would often walk the streets at night, maybe six nights a week as, a, as an organization. We'd help people who got drunk, would help them get home. But one of the big things we did was offer people prayer. And I, I, as I'm not a particularly weird chap. So I, I used to, my initial uh, experience of that was offering to pray for people. Surely people are just going to go, no, you're mad. Leave me alone. I'm on holiday. And the, it, was, it was almost contrary to that, that when we started to walk the streets from, say, midnight till six in the morning, we would go up to people in twos, really non-threatening, no preaching. And we'd say, hi, listen, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Is there anything I can pray with you about? And like most summers, there'd be about a thousand people who would say, yes, yeah, sure, I'd love you to pray with me. At first, it would be quite surface, you know, world peace, big one. But when you when people realized that you were serious and that you did and could pray, they, they people really, really engage with it. And so I've, I've long become uh, a convert to the fact that people really don't mind praying it's just that we need to learn how to and we want to we want to talk you know to a god who we believe will listen i do believe in an interventionist god i believe in a god who hears so what what would my 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 thoughts on prayer would be as i was thinking about today would be that at this point there's a beautiful story in the book of mark in mark chapter 4 in the bible where the disciples are with jesus he's been teaching all day but beside the, the uh, galilee and jesus turns to his disciples and says let's get in the boat guys we're going to go to the other side so it's in the evening uh, they they sail out into galilee which is renowned because of the, the mountainous stuff and it, it quick storms blow up and all of that. And so Jesus, with his disciples, heads out into, into the middle of the Sea of Galilee. They're heading to the other side. A big storm blows up. Disciples kind of, as it were, uh, panic and wake Jesus up, who happens to be asleep at the stern of the boat. And they, you know, and say, and he gets up and he says, peace be still. And I think for me, it's a really beautiful analogy of what I think prayer is right now, is that probably we've been plodding along culturally, we've been plodding along as individuals and as society, and it's not really been that rocky yet for some, in some aspects, but for us here in the UK, it's not been that rocky. And it's like all of a sudden COVID-19 comes along and our nation feels like it's in a storm. Our lives feel like they're in some form of storm. Our, uh, you know, we're, we're worried about our grandparents. We, we've got friends with asthma. We, you know, we, we catch a tube in London and we're like frightened of holding on to a rail. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a storm. Now, by anybody's standards, this is a storm economically, emotionally, you know, physically. This is a storm. And I, I think in storms, people pray, you know, in storms, people pray and in storms, they start to call out. And so the disciples are here in the middle of the boat. And interestingly, what Jesus does is he gets up and he says, peace, be still, peace, be still. And the reality is this, that, that I think we pray because we want peace. We are longing for stillness in our lives. We're longing for peace in our lives. The other thing that happens is that <laughs> it, it, there's just an awareness that Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. He's there. And so for me, yes, I, I need peace, but I also need presence. I need to understand that there is someone who is with me. There is someone who is journeying with me through this time, who is walking with me through the challenges of what we are facing. And so in storms, we pray. And many times the prayers are very, very basic. They are, help me, help me. Whether that's help me in my mood, help me 
cope with this, help me in my fear, help me in my anxiety. Because I think culturally there's, there probably already is uh, an ambient anxiety that sits around in the back of our minds as we look and we watch online, uh, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, and we see everybody's lives that they're living. And there's this kind of ambient background anxiety, which I think in this time has pushed to the fore. That, that we all have this it's there but right now it's pushed to the fore and it's in that that we we start to pray that we start to call out I mean some people would call it religious coping uh that's that's okay I don't mind coping with you know using my religion to help me cope that's the very idea of faith is that faith helps me cope and helps me in my life and helps me as I pray so for me, it, it, there's something going on here around anxiety, around stress, around the storm that is leading us to prayer and leading people to prayer. Now, how do we pray? Well, that's a, that's a, a really, there are, it's multifaceted, but how we pray is, I, I think, in, in my language, it would be very uh, extemporous. It would be very, uh, just how I speak. So the way I pray is just how I'm talking to you now. You know, I, I, the way I have, I converse with God is how I converse with my wife, how I converse with my children. That's how I, I pray. It is a conversation between man and God. And I, sometimes people find that a little bit odd, but I would sit in the morning and I have a conversation. Sometimes I would use fixed prayers, set prayers, which are also helpful. There's, if you, if you, you can Google this, but there are loads of set prayers that one could read to help in times of crisis. So I, I, I either pray just like chatting away or I use a set prayer or else I use the Bible to help me pray. The Bible is full of beautiful prayers and ones which we use on a regular basis. So I'm, I'm a great believer in some of the, we'd call them the classics, you know, like Psalm 23 and all of that. They're, they're beautiful Psalms that we can use as prayers. So I, I use my own language. I use written liturgical prayers. I use biblical prayers, all as a way to uh, talk to God. I think one of the things we also find is that, that occasionally people are, uh, we don't like to pray for ourselves because we feel that's selfish. You know, I, I, one of the things that would often happen when I ask people, can I pray for you? Say, no, don't pray for me, pray for them. You know, don't pray for me, pray for this situation. But in the reality is that we have a, in, in the Christian faith, we have a God who cares for us personally and wants us to speak to him and talk to him on a, a regular basis. So it's in, perfectly okay to pray for yourself perfectly okay to ask God to help you it's not being selfish if I believe that he is the omniscient omnipotent one you know who's omnipresent then I must also believe that he cares individually for each one of us and he cares for me so my prayers tend to not be too stressed about praying for myself how do I avoid, how do I uh, you know stop from being completely selfish well of course we have to remember the world around us you only need to glimpse a newspaper or to read you know uh your friend's Facebook page or no so your students you don't do Facebook anymore but you know to have a look at people's Facebook or whatever it gives you cues and ways to pray so so it's not only you know praying for ourselves but it's praying for others I, I guess uh, we've all seen the hashtag thoughts and prayers you know my thoughts and prayers something's happened thoughts and prayers I don't really un I, I, I don't really uh, I'm not entirely sure we always know what to do when there is a tsunami and Justin Bieber tweets praying for Japan, what does he mean? What do we mean? And so there's gotta be ways in which we learn to pray. I, I think for that, when we're praying in situations that are challenging, we should pray for the people. That's the people affected. So my, I, I'm gonna give you a really simple way for praying for disaster, is the people who are affected, so that's on the ground, the people who are being affected. Then we pray for the pastors. By pastors, I mean those people who are responsible in shepherding roles. Pastor just another word for shepherd. So that would be your nurses, your healthcare professionals, your doctors, your you know uh, re relief workers, any anyone in that. So we pray for people, we pray for pastors, and then we pray for politicians. We pray for those who can actually affect and make change. And so when it comes to a crisis, when it comes to praying, you know, hashtag thoughts and prayers. I tend to always be praying for the people, the pastors 
politicians. And, and we kind of cover that response whenever we're praying for something that is challenging and difficult around the world. So for me, prayer is very real. Uh, I look at uh, history and I see that many, many people have prayed, not just in the Bible, but uh, many public figures, many historical figures. I even see that Jurgen Klopp, the uh, manager of Liverpool Football Club, prays. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't want to alienate any Manchester United supporters in this conversation. However, it is interesting that increasingly we can talk about our faith, we can talk about our prayer lives publicly. Me, I would love to see as well a return to uh, the quiet time. If, you, if the quiet time is uh, God's idea of mindfulness, it's been around for many, many years that we see Jesus who went away to a quiet place to pray. Jesus, the, the son of God, went away to a solitary place. Jesus, the son of God, went up a mountain. Jesus, the son of God, went to a garden. So he went to a, a quiet place to pray. So I, I think one of the best things we could all learn to do would be to, have to find uh, a quiet time in our day where we pray and so for me that involves a little bit of reading the bible a little bit of praying a little bit of journaling and it's, it's a time spent with god a quiet time where i settle my soul there was uh, there was an old uh, puritan preacher called joseph alien in the 1600s who talked about how he was like a needle in a compass that was a little bit wobbly until he found his prayer space again and then and then he, he felt fixed and and he 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 said a beautiful little statement he said is tis the business and delight of my life to seek him and it's not like seek a god who can't really be found but it's going to the place where god is that's what it means and spending time with him and i do i do think there's something in our noisy culture about reclaiming the quiet time about spending some time praying just spending some time offloading what's on our mind whether that's like you know i'm stressed about this i'm stressed about that i'm worried about my grandparents i'm i'm, I'm unsure whether university is going to be virtual or real next year all those kind of things and just putting it out there in the time of prayer then the bible reading is us just like asking god to speak to us this is where we can find him let's 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 do that so there's a sense of the quiet time i think is a really important thing right now that that could do with being uh, for want of a better word reclaimed i think we need to reclaim the quiet time reclaim that sense of uh calling out to god again in prayer probably at the beginning of the day. See, if you were, to, or, well, evening, let's not, let, let not me uh, make it too difficult. Where can you pray? There's another question. Uh, for me, it's a chair in the morning. For many, it's a church, but churches are closed. But the, re the reality is you could also pray in a gym. You know, I've got two sons. So I've, I, have a, I, I have a little bed over in the corner. I'm not gonna show it to you because it's probably some, you know, but I, I, as I'm doing my weights, as I'm doing my weights in the morning, uh, when I go to the gym, I'm lifting, I, I think one of them's Ellis and one of them's Daniel, and I lift my sons up and pray. So actually, you can turn almost any area where you go into a place of prayer. You just need to get it in your head that God is everywhere. He, he will hear you. Uh, it's what someone once said, bidden or not bidden, God is present. So, so my prayer time can be in the morning, coffee, Bible, chilled, little lamp quiet all of that my prayer time can be at the gym lifting up people you know actually using some physical exercises to recreate some sort of spiritual patterns in my mind uh prayer time can be in the car i don't know if any you know but like i had a friend who uh he used to pray in his car and on his first date with a girl he he, he said to I remember saying to me that my my car is my sanctuary and he opened his car door and he said to this young lady he said welcome to my sanctuary uh she found that incredibly weird. Didn't go that badly, though, because they are now married. But that idea of finding a space and making a space available to help you pray and to help you focus and say, OK, I'm going to drive my car. I'm not just going to listen to Spotify. I'm going to spend 20 minutes just talking to God or 20 minutes in silence. You know, so the, these are the things that we need to do to, to help us pray. I have prayer beads. Bishop of London gave me some beautiful prayer beads, which I hold. Now, there's no magic power in the prayer beads, but holding them just helps me not to lose track. I think one of the things that happens when we pray is we get distracted. I don't know about you, but when I'm 
praying well distraction happens in general we live a we live in a generation of distraction okay so one of the one of the challenges i have say in the morning i'm praying there's a there's a beautiful book in the bible called romans i'm at romans 12 i'm thinking oh romans 12 it's beautiful it's how now how then shall we live and you know that's just the, the language is phenomenal paul the writer is firing on all cylinders i'm reading it i'm praying i'm thinking about romans and then i think I've never been to Rome. Oh, I'd love to go to Rome. I love their food. I've got a couple of Italian friends. I wonder where I'd stay. I wonder if there's any uh, on Airbnb. Oh, yeah, no. Of course, yeah, I'd love some pasta for tea. Oh, there's some pasta in the in the, uh, in the the fridge. I'll get some pasta. Oh, no, there's, I'll tell you what, I'd love that. Wouldn't it be great with shrimps? I tell, I, or with prawns, I'll pop along to the supermarket. Well, supermarket, weren't they doing a deal on strawberries? Oh, I had a beautiful meal the other day around my mother-in-law's, and she did strawberry dessert. Oh, no, I promised them I was going to lend them my pressure watcher to help them wash their driveway and then you're like oh my goodness I need to drop that off later and then you think oh, what if we should buy them a pressure washer for Christmas but it's mid-March and all of a sudden I'm on Amazon looking at pressure wash washers and all of this began <laughs> whenever I was just having a deep meditation on uh, Romans so I, I think we can get distracted. So when it comes to praying, we have to learn to deal with the distractions. We have to learn to kind of find the space, cut out the distractions. I kind of tend to uh, to grade the distraction and then I can't tame the distraction, you know, grade it by like, is this important? No, that's not important. Is this something I need to be praying about? And then I can tame it and pray about it. But they're, they're important things we need to do. So you find that space, try and distill and remove the distractions and focus one of the greatest things that will help you in prayer is focus uh it's something i read from uh, the, in c.s lewis the, the weight of glory he talks about if we always wait for distractions to uh disappear they they don't favorable times never come there's always distraction it's like one day i'm going to be this great prayer monk monastic type person no 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 it's, you're always going to have this distraction in life so we have to learn to focus and deal with distraction so that we can learn to pray so these are my uh rambling thoughts on prayer i genuinely believe that i i pray most importantly because god listens I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and it helps, it rests on us. I believe in a God who hears. I believe in a God who provides. And so that's 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 why I, I pray. And I would, I think I would just really encourage you that we are in a storm. I would encourage you to uh, find that quiet place where you can still yourself and still your soul. We can be like that compass and you get yourself straight again and where you can focus on the Lord and pray in a language, your own language, whether it's written, whether that's something you've Googled online, but there's something beautiful about just talking to the Lord in our, our own language and allowing him to, to hear all our thoughts, our anxiety, our pain, our pressure. Yeah. That's, that's me. So that's, they're my thoughts on prayer, Sam. Uh, if you're, I'm happy if you have any other questions and uh, hopefully that's helpful. Great. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I'm sure that's left a lot of us with, with lots to think about. Um, we've had quite a few questions um, sent in already, but do, do keep sending them in and we'll try and get to them. Um, I think one of, the, one of the major sort of themes that's come out of a lot of the questions um, has, has been around sort of, we pray in desperate situations. Um, one question says, you know, is it, is it just human nature for us to pray in desperate situations or, you know, um, is it sort of part of part of because we live in a Christian country and it's sort of programmed into us. Um, and and I think there's, yeah, there's a lot of questions around. Just want to ask you, Brian, do you think is it wrong to want to pray in a desperate situation um, because it's actually more out of fear um, and not out of faith? Um, and, and why do you think we're sort of why is it human nature to, to pray um, in desperate situations? Uh, I, the, the simple answer is yes, I do think it is, uh, in desperate situations, people tend to pray more. I think when it's, it's like, I'm talking about the storm, you know, they're, they're crying out to Jesus in the middle of the storm. So I don't, I don't think it's wrong. I think if it just ended there, that we just ended up praying in difficult situations, I think God's okay with that. But the reality for me is that prayer is about a relationship. So I have a relationship with my wife or my children. I don't just call out to them when I need something. I live in this kind of daily communion with them. So for me, it would be important that I think it's a good starting point. 
I think whenever people start to realize, my goodness, uh, there's got to be more to life than the world I have created. Everything's a little bit desperate. I need to pray. Uh, that that's okay, but I think it has to go beyond that into uh, relationship because God wants relationship, so He wants to communicate and He wants to talk. So I'm I I think it's a good starting point, Sam. But I do think it's uh, uh, it has to develop. Now, if it never develops, that's fine. Uh, when I was a young man, I remember I was I I went to prison. Okay, so the, but this is I mean, look at me, I'm grace. This is many years ago, right? And, and when I was in the, the holding cell to go up to court, before you got to court, everybody's a Christian. <laughs> everybody's praying, dear God, help me, you know, help me get off this and help me get off that. So there is a sense in which uh, at, at this time, there are going to be more people calling out and praying. And, you know, some, I guess I even heard someone say to me, oh, it's just people just grasping at straws. I, I don't. I don't buy into that reality. I don't think it is grasping at straws. I do think that we, at moments like this, realize that what, what separates us from the animals is that we have this other consciousness, this spiritual consciousness. And I do sometimes think it is in crisis that spiritual consciousness is awoken. And I think that as long as we, we I want to see that, um, obviously I work for a prayer organization and I believe passionately in prayer. So I want that spiritual consciousness to remain awoken i don't just want to cry out in the drowning moments but i want to i want to see that develop so i think it's a good starting point sam mm. great thank you so much um i think sort of very much linked to that as we, we talk a lot about god hearing us and um, but how how can we know that god hears our prayers um yeah how do we know that if we're praying that's why it's called faith so um, yeah, so the, for me, it's 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 my Christian faith, that, and and one of the uh, in in Hebrews it says now faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see, and so there is an element to faith that is uh, I, I won't always see I I have to believe, and so there is a sense of you know believing. If you were to read say John, in in the Bible at the end, the Jesus talks to his disciples and said, many of you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those who believe who haven't seen or, you know, physically seen. And so there's a, there's a degree of, of faith that I have to believe that when I speak, I'm not just speaking into emptiness and that, that, you know, here I am a highly evolved gorilla on a planet that was somehow accidental. You know, I have to believe that probably there was a creator behind creation and therefore uh, it, it's a faith thing for me really sam so I, I, that's that's the leap that many have to take when it comes to that and so how do i know god he is well if i'm if i'm a believer in uh in christianity if i believe in jesus i believe in the bible and the bible tells me that god hears it says in in many different chapters of the bible that when we pray god turns his ear as it were from heaven and listens to us so i have to believe in the in the tenets of my faith which very clearly state that when i pray god hears me so it's a faith it's faith mm. i wish it was i wish it was a bit easier than that sometimes mm. Do you know what i mean and it was like poof you know like like a genie in a lamp in a, in a lamp but uh it's not and mm. so i have to i have to have faith yeah yeah and it's not always not always simple um, no. it's a lifelong thing isn't it mm -hmm. um but i suppose with with hearing comes also that question of answering um a lot of people have, have asked sort of how do we you know does does god actually does prayer actually make a difference or is it just for me um and, and sort of is it just a is it just an empty comfort or will it actually change sort of things around me um good question i i believe that that uh it, the, the biggest challenge we're all going to have is the the challenge of unanswered prayer you know of that, that sense of uh, i prayed and nothing happened the, the reality is we don't always know what has happened outside and beyond of what we've done there is a there is that it's just a real the real challenge for me is that often we're praying that god would come and lift us out of our situation that he would come and like almost as it were rescue us which which he has said he will do but a lot of the time when we pray god comes and he is present with us in our situation so so for me it's sometimes the situation doesn't change but i become awareness or i become aware of the god who stands with me in the situation so i have his i have his presence to help me face the storm however i, I do believe that when we pray that god 
who is omnipotent, who I cannot question in, in loads of ways, but that God does answer prayer. So I have prayed for people and they've got better. OK, they've, who've been sick and they've got better. I've prayed for other people and they've died. Now, I'm not saying my prayer killed them, but they were ill, you know. And so so sometimes. The, 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 I, guys, I'd, I'd love just I, what you're going to get from me here is I have to be myself. I, I could give you the very you know, the technical stuff. Sometimes it's it would appear that it works. Sometimes it would appear that we don't quite get the answers that we would hope for. And that's that's an incredibly challenging thing to work with, but also one that requires faith. So there's a, there's a beautiful line that says, why does the, the, does the clay question the potter? And I, I find that infuriating and annoying, but true. That in the end, God is God. And I, I sometimes get to see him answer. Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait. You know, that you'll, if you've ever done an alpha course, you'll, you'll see it. that's on there. And I, I find that happens quite a lot. Sometimes, yes, things happen. Situations change. People receive healing or peace comes. Other times it's no. I don't know why. And sometimes it's wait. It can take a little longer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I think there's a for me personally, that, that asking God for press to me seemed like asking God for things for a long time. Um, yeah. I'm actually a Manchester United fan, Brian. I should probably say that now. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. Right. Often, often praying against Liverpool. Um, but, you know, that's not always answered. Um, but I think there's, a, there's a, a question that a few people have asked is actually are there different types of prayer. Someone's asked about contemplative prayer. Um, I mean, is prayer more than just asking God for things? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's probably where we, we it becomes a little bit too binary if it is just asking God for things. So, I mean, the Eastern Orthodox tradition around the whole breathing prayer, really, really helpful. So, you know, there's like Jesus Christ, son of God, and you breathe in Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. And that said repetitively, repetitively can be really incredibly helpful. I think there's a lot to do with silent prayer. I, I have a holding cross. I wish I, they're all downstairs. I wish I'd have brought them with me. But, you know, sometimes I walk and I actually just hold a cross and I, I use that. And just as a time of contemplation, other times I would just uh, say, take a chapter of the Bible and, and do some divine reading, lecture divina. So I would just, I would read it and then reread it and then reread it and ask God to speak to me through it. So I find that the, the Bible reading aspect of prayer is something that we kind of can neglect, but it's, it's, it's there. Uh, the, the breathing prayer, the contemplation. Uh, another thing that people don't talk about a lot, Sam, either in terms of different types of prayer is fasting. Mm. You know, so th there's a slight difference between fasting and abstinence. So if I say I'm giving up Twitter for Lent, I'm abstaining. Fasting really means I'm going to give up food. Now, obviously, in today's age, we've got to be so careful about encouraging people to do, you know, some form of aesthetic practice. But the reality is there's quite a lot in the Bible. Jesus says when you fast, not if you fast. And so there's, there's some of this like giving stuff up as prayer. That, that it's really fascinating whether that be some food for three days or from you know whether that's actually I'm gonna I'm, I had a friend who said he wasn't gonna watch Netflix for a year which is incredible I mean I'd be struggling right now uh, so you know there's lots of different ways to pray so yeah contemplation uh, one of the things we don't do as well a lot of is gratitude you know, if you're always asking, 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 I think it can get you, we almost buy into the cultural thing, which is, you know, you need to have more, you need to have more, you need to have more. And there's something I think the, the Bible and the Christian faith teaches me about contentment mm -hmm. and how I remain content would be to be thankful for what I've got and to not focus on what I don't have, but be grateful for what I do have. So I think that, you know, spending a week of prayers that were just thankful prayers would be incredibly helpful for anybody so thankfulness for me is a, is a a real good one you know and we don't we don't stop often do and just say lord I give thanks for my wife i give thanks for my children i give thanks you know and and so that that would be in, in, incredibly important so yeah there's lots of different styles and and types of prayer i i you know i we do a lot of work with the catholic church in vienna and i just love going to the mass and hearing you know well i don't have i don't i don't speak german so I don't really know what's happening, but I, I love the whole, as it were, uh, can you say this? I love the vibe. You know, I love the incense and the, the I love all the, 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 the scenery, the, the stained glass and all of that around me. Cause I think it, 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 it evokes something in me. So am I, my, and I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm Protestant evangelical. Okay. I grew up in a Baptist church, all of that. I work for the Anglicans. So I'm not, 
but exploring different types of, you know, our Christian faith can be really helpful and rich and diverse in deepening who we are in, in, in our prayer lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's definitely a, a wide range of different yeah. um, prayer out there. And I, I think uh, sort of linked to that, um, you talk about meditation and, and things like Lectio Divina um, and, and there's, you know, there's clearly is quite a wide range of prayer out there, but I suppose you linked it to mindfulness and someone's asked sort of if prayer is about self-knowledge, self-reflection and mindfulness, why do we need to pray to the Christian God? Why, what's so special about Jesus that we, we should, you know, pray to him? It's a very good question. Uh, I, it's, I, I guess, prob I hope I haven't overly emphasized that, that prayer is about just self-knowledge. I think prayer is probably for me is about divine knowledge for prayer about me is getting to know God and and seeking him you know it's just seek the Lord while he may be found it's you know it's a sense of me seeking God and looking for God and and learning about something other than me rather than learning about something in me and I think as I learn about something other than me it does affect the stuff in me when I focus on God through the person of Jesus Christ it starts to challenge who I am and how I live and then so that changes the stuff in me but so it's not totally introspective and you know and looking in so for me the 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 I, I guess as a Christian my my reason for praying to the Christian God is because I believe in all the promises that were written in the Bible so I want to tap into you know the the the, the peace the the gentleness the love that that is proclaimed throughout the gospels and throughout the Bible so I, I therefore pray because of that if I'm just looking to uh to go on a journey of self-awareness I, I for me it can end up getting a little bit too introspective and I can become a little bit unhappy with what I find in here whereas when I look out I, I see other ideals something to attain to something to move towards rather than something to just look at so uh, so I think it, for me it lifts me out it, it's a divine consciousness that I really want to have rather than just a, a personal inner consciousness mm -hmm. mm, yeah. it sound too airy fairy mm. no but you're right it's about relationship it's not it's not just about uh, yeah me thinking about myself definitely yeah um and i suppose with that comes we, you know, a question about listening to god actually hearing mm. from god um do, do you want to just talk a bit about yeah how do we hear from god um yeah sure yeah it's it's, it's a well i think for, for starters the, the bible tends to be the best way to hear from god okay because it, it talks about it is many say it's the word of god and so i think uh a healthy reading of the Bible will often uh, allow you to hear from God. And what when I so I would say I, I, I hear from God. It's not an audible voice. OK, sometimes I will be reading a scripture. So I've recently I was reading something. I was thinking, uh, I was, you know, struggling with some issues. And I, I just came. I was reading Samuel 22, I think, 2 Samuel 22. And it's David's last psalm and all of that. And it's there's a little line in there that says, I'm going to lead you into a spacious place. And, and something in it just jumped out at me and spoke to me. And it was about like in mentally I've been coming a little constricted and the Lord just wanted to lead me out. And it was like, so that for me was that I would say that was God speaking, you know? So it was, it was like almost like a, an unexplained thought, something that leapt out of the page that is God speaking. But there's also sometimes there's thoughts and impressions that we get that I, you've got to just, I mean, God's not going to ask you to do anything stupid. OK, and to do anything crazy, that's so there is a sense of weighing it. But like I've, I, the amount of people I've met who I, I was doing some stuff in Pentonville prison and a guy who was talking to me about his favorite Bible verse. And then the guy who got up to speak did a whole talk on his favorite, favorite Bible verse. And he went to me, oh, my goodness. And he was like, he used other kind of language, but he was like, God speaking to me, God speaking to me, because so, so I do think it, it would it would appear to me that that God speaks primarily out of scripture, out of the word of God, but God will speak through talks and through, you know, we've been, I've listened to great sermons or beautiful music or, you know, God, God speaks in so many ways that, that it, but it's, be, I think the prayer part of it is that we start to become attuned and we tune in a little bit more so we start to become more aware why am i thinking about this person this morning maybe god wants me to pray for them maybe i should give them a call and send them a text just you know it's that kind of stuff that when stuff starts to jump into our minds we start to think how did that get there or maybe it was the lord speaking so that that's mm -hmm. a kind of another rambly answer sam sorry 
No, no, it's a great answer. We are done. Thank you very much for that. Um, and just to say, I think if you're listening and and you've never read the Bible for yourself, um, I think at the very least, it's it's a it's a book that has changed human history, probably the most significant yeah. book of, of human history. So if you are if you are listening and think to yourself, well, where do I begin? Um, a great place to start is a, is a gospel. I'm sure Brian would agree, but you know, a story about Jesus. Um, and and if you want to do that with someone, if you come with a friend, ask them. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or do you get in touch with us at Oxford Big Questions? We, we'd love to um, help you out with that. Um, my, my recommendation, Sam, is always that people read the book of Mark mm. first because it's nice and short. It's a good mm. intro. It's a good way in, you know, mm. and, I, and so the book of Mark for me is it's actually where I shared that story about Jesus and the storm. But it's, it's, it's a great it's a great entry point if it's mm. your first time at looking at the Bible. Mm, yes, it's often called the Northern Gospel because it's so short and snappy to the yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I think we've got time for probably two more questions, um, Brian. So we're, we're firstly, um, sort of one on, on actually, again, that relationship and that prayer um, as we relate to God, actually. Someone's asked, if, if God's going to do something anyway, what's the point of praying for it? Can our prayers really change God's mind? Um, well, yeah, can they? I think they do. I think our prayers can change God's mind. I think they do change God's mind. Uh, I don't think God gets surprised by a lot. I don't think God is surprised by COVID-19. I don't think God has been surprised by that. But I do think our prayers can and do affect God. I think when that's about interceding, stepping in, hearing. And, you know, there's instances in the Bible, uh, specifically in Genesis uh, or, you know, in Exodus, where, where Moses spoke to God and changed God's mind. So I do think there is a sense of, but it's a, it's a, it's a tight rope that we walk there because there is the immutability of God, the unchanging nature of God but it's that his nature doesn't change but i think we can ask him to shift and move things and i do believe that he does so i do i i, I think it is possible mm. and i do, I'd, i'm i'm i or else we're just going to just sit back and believe in karma and just believe that all just what happens happens there's nothing we can do it's just like just lay back and let it all go and and, and if that's where you're you're at that's you know it's an interesting place to be but i i can't live like that i it seems to me that there's that like when you think about the second world war and there was and there was a national day of prayer that was called and then some of the phenomenal changes that happened after a national day of prayer and that were a little bit weird you know and you know you 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 didn't expect them to happen so I, I just see historically, biblically, and in my own life that that God can change things and can turn things around, you know, and does. Uh, I mean, sometimes it doesn't always, you know, there's a beautiful line in the Bible that says he can, he's able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. Sometimes I, I think that sometimes he does things that we just could never imagine, you know, and, and all of that. So, yeah, as, I, I think as well, Sam, it's, it, we pray, but we don't, it's, it's, god who answers and we have to respect his answer not necessarily uh i i kind of pray and i want to give god the answer he should be giving me do, do you know what i mean it's it's just this little tight space that we find ourselves in from time to time mm, yeah that's really helpful um i mean the fact that we're even asking that question suggests there's some sort of special privilege and that we can approach god in prayer um, yeah. that, that we could even possibly change his mind um i think a, a great question to end with that, that someone asked is um how do i pray for the first time yeah brilliant that's the best question ever i i think for me I, listen i, I I'll, I'll take you through how i pray for the first time and it is just it starts with dear god you know and and it's i know that sounds like you're writing a letter but it is like you, you've got to somehow just even or god or lord or whatever but it's kind of then you're focusing your mind you're focusing your attention and then it is just the conversational piece it is just saying you know use your own language you don't have to put your hands together you don't have to close your eyes but sometimes closing your eyes and putting your hands together helps you focus you know that's what i've noticed is that if i do this i'm not like touching the mouse on my computer or i don't know closing my eyes helps me not to be distracted by the sun coming in or you know whatever so 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 there's that aspect to it and then it is just normal language keep it short keep it brief keep it simple you know yeah short brief simple is always the way you don't have to be overly complicated and then i always finish with amen which is just as simple it means i agree uh, and if there's others around that's really helpful because they can agree with you as it were so I, I kind of top and tail it with a deer and an amen at the end and then in the middle i just waffle on uh, and but i try and keep it short 
try and keep it brief, try and just be to the point. And uh, the thing is, right, even if you're not, if you just waffle, God loves it. Do you know what? I've, I've, I've got adult sons now. When they were little, if they just sat on my knee and they just waffled on about Barney the Dinosaur for 20 minutes, it was a pleasure that my children wanted to sit and talk to me. I almost didn't really worry too much about what they were saying. It was the pleasure of a child sitting on my lap conversing with me. And so I, I think as, as, as best you can to keep it simple, keep it, ref, you know, just relaxed and honest. And, and God, God tends to love that. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much. Um, that's incredibly helpful. Um, and that's, that's all we've got time for today. Um, but if, if you've enjoyed this event and, and you have further questions, a great place to, to continue thinking about some of this stuff um, is at The Search. The Search happens online every Monday uh, on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. And it's a great opportunity to hear further uh, about some of the, the claims of Christianity and to chat about them uh, in small groups. And you can find that at The Search online um, if you put that into Facebook. Um, but we've loved having you guys. Um, Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to chat to you. Um, but that's all from us. Thank you for joining us. And we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.